I'm so thankful for our partnership with the Spot Athletics in Columbus, Ohio. Our offices and our studios are here, and because of our partnership, I get to offer you 10% off of any of their sport and life programs. That goes for athletes, that goes for adults, 10%. All you have to do is go to the spotathletics.com backslash get started and enter code unscripted10 in the comments. That's all you got to do. The spotathletics.com backslash get started and enter unscripted10 in the comments, and they'll get you started today. When I think about you. Unscripted Podcast. We're Tori and Shana, and you're listening to our song called When I Think About You. Available on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you enjoy your favorite songs. But for now, let's listen in to your host and our friend, Aaron Aaron Conrad. All right, everybody, welcome back to Unscripted from my studios at the Spot Athletics in Columbus, Ohio. I have a returning guest. Craig, could you introduce yourself again to our audience? Well, I'm just Craig Smith, and it's great to be back with you guys and appreciate the opportunity to kind of do an update on what we're doing with Awake of the Dawn and in our mission side, where all of the revenue that comes in from our devotional goes into missions. And so I'm excited to talk to you again, Aaron. Thank you. And it's great to have you again. I know we enjoyed our first conversation so much. So as a plug, go back and listen to that one. I think it was pretty lengthy, but it was a, just a wonderful conversation. So as soon as I saw the opportunity to have you back on, I said, absolutely. So let's start with the book again. It is a new year and it's probably a very good time for people to, you know, re-engage and I know everybody's getting back to the gym or getting, <laughs> getting back to their diet or whatever it might be starting a new year. So let's talk about the book because I think it might be a good way for people to start the year. Okay. Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, sharing with a, a group just a few days ago, and I was talking about New Year's resolutions and resetting things, kind of resetting our hearts. And I realized that I was really going to try to do no sugar, at least for a period of time. And I think I made it about 10 minutes into 2020 before I came. But, hey, that was a strong 10 minutes, <laughs> though. <laughs> it was a really strong But anyway, well... Uh, I began talking to this group a couple of weeks ago just because it's out of my own life. So this ties into Awaken the Dawn because we have a little alarm clock. It's so old that sits on the nightstand next to the bed. It's digital and uh, it has a bit of a mind of its own. It, it just moves fast forward. And so I have to reset the thing about every two months. And so, so I, I started thinking about that clock and really my, my spiritual life. Just that, man, I love God. There's so many of us that love God, want to serve God. We try to stay consistent in our walk with the Lord. But I thought, it's not like I have to go back and repent for all the stuff that I did wrong. But it's really, if, if my goal is, if my goal in life as a follower of Jesus is to just do that, if I could just figure out and get all the other clutter out of the way, what does that really look like? So honestly, With this first of the year being just started in my own life, and I'm encouraging friends and others that are getting on board with Awaken the Dawn devotional to just quiet ourselves, position ourselves in the word and in prayer and go, you know, Father, obviously you say in your word that you're well pleased with your son, Jesus. And so I just, you know, I'm just going to be here and be quiet, read the word and listen and ask you to reset my heart to look like his more mm. deeper layers mm-hmm. awaken the dawn is as we talked about last time it's it's something that was developed out of my own quiet time that need and it's based on the lord's prayer the main keys in the lord's prayer and it just takes those main themes and can rotates them once a week and gives a it's it's an on ramp it's a brief starter it is loosely based on isaiah 54 when when that scripture says morning by morning God wakens me. He wakens me and brings me to an understanding of his will. So I, I just think every morning, if we could encourage the body of Christ in America globally, but, but particularly here, that if we could scale back and look at the core values that 
God really called us to in the first place. I think sometimes in my life, I spin out of control and I get all these other theological preferences and things that I think I'd have to have to, to have this walk with Jesus. When in reality, the walk itself may be difficult, but understanding it is pretty simplistic. So Awaken the Dawn, is, it's, it's just a, an offering. It's, I will tell you a funny story. This happened, Rick. We're getting a lot of uh, emails and messages. But... So one morning, I get, I get about 4 or 4.30 a.m. and I pick some coffee, go to this place that I use consistently. While I'm waking up, I look at a few emails directed to Awaken the Dawn. So I was reading this one, and it was someone from another country. It was my morning. It was their evening. And they said earlier in that day, they read the morning devotional. And they were just thanking me. They just said, this is, this is so wonderfully spiritual and deep. So I'm thinking, man, you know, I'm going to go check that out and see what they're talking about that particular day because it was written a long time ago and edited and re-edited. So I read it. I, this is not a very good confession, but I read it, and I went, well, that's too good. For me to have written. <laughs> That's so, yeah. So then I, I took it into my, my wife. She was at a different location. And so about an hour later, I told her the same story I just told you. She said, well, let me read that. So she kicks it open and reads that day. And she says, gosh, Craig, this is too good to have been written by you. <laughs> so, <Come on. laughs> so I'm just saying that to say, I, in my heart, I think that there's something that's a real kingdom value. He kicks it out of our abilities. If, if I can, if I, if I take it to my best, it's still not going to be good enough to say that it's from God. So I'm encouraged by the responses that we're getting, Aaron. That's awesome. So that's been encouraging. That's great. And, and the sales. So I know when we, when you were on last time, we talked a lot about the book and, and briefly touched on village to village. So I think today we really want to talk about Village to Village because this all 100% of the sales, correct me if I'm wrong, 100% of the sales of the book go to Village to Village. That, that, is, that is correct. Now, the publisher, of course, they, that would be anything that's coming to us. Sure. Yeah. Everyone pretty much knows how that works. So it's, uh, right. we, we are taking, I personally am taking nothing from it. It all goes to missions. And I don't even, I, it just takes my breath away almost. It's like we are... Uh, we're a small organization. I don't have this giant platform and things that I did in music, Christian music years ago. I obviously do not do those anymore. I would say that if, if you were to say, what are the two things that you want to do in life, Craig? I would, I want to encourage believers in Christ to, to truly see if we can live the Jesus life and make a difference in particularly our nation where we live. The second thing I would say is that, uh, I didn't have this on my bucket list, but Getting deeply involved in missions, primarily to children at risk, has been our, our focus. So, mm -hmm. as you said, the proceeds from the book, we dedicated those prior. And since the book was released, since we talked last, somewhere over a quarter of a million and under $300,000 has come in specifically wow. for missions. And that's just blown us away. I mean, we are to the point of tears. I mean, my team and I are just... We were hoping that this would, at the very least, as its first mission, call people into that quiet place with God, and that mm -hmm. the secondary mission would allow us some visibility and even hopefully revenue to come into it so we could work more in the four primary areas that we're working in right now with what we call Hope Village. So it has, it's just blown us away, Aaron, in that realm. That's awesome. And what, what do you do with those funds? What, what is the nonprofit primarily? Well, we have four areas of the country right now where we've been in outside of Kampala, Uganda, in a village called Ghana. We started 11 years ago with under 16 or 18 children. I can't remember exactly. And we were working with an indigenous pastor. We made friends with him, established his friendship and relationship. And his vision was to reach the children of his village. He said, I, I feel like one of the best ways that we could change my situation is by taking the characteristics and the values of Jesus and trying to instill those into the children. And I love that mission. That's the thing that I wasn't ready for. So we've been working there now 11 years, getting closer to 12. So we have been investing. We started in a little hut with literally dirt floors, no electricity, and 
over the years, we now have two, three story buildings uh, with 300 students. Wow. Now that's going to be defined as third world construction terminology. So they're sure. not going to be like sure. downtown Atlanta. <laughs> right. Well, right. But it is, uh, they're housing the students. We, we're, it's just incredible to see students that have came into the ministry when they were five and six years old. And some of those guys now have graduated and they're, doing the, they're pouring into the younger children. Some of them, their goals have gone from, we, some were taken from human trafficking. Some were, wow. just didn't have very positive futures at all. So to invest in one area over a long term has been very gratifying. And now what we've done, part of the money that's come in, Jesus told us that we are to love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I think in the realm of right. discipleship, it kind of encompasses my entire being and your entire being. So, man, we right. want you to be the best Christian broadcaster, podcaster that you possibly can, Aaron. <laughs> And Thank you. <laughs> uh, so whatever, so whatever area God has gifted and skilled us in, let's just take that, just take that to the max. And that's what we've been presenting to these children. If Christ is the center of your life, then ask him, what are the things that you can do? What's he called you to do to change the area where you live, where you can be a positive influence? Because whatever God's called you to do, you know, he's going to give, he's going to be right there waiting to give you whatever provisions you need to make sure that it's a win for you because it's going to ultimately be a win for the kingdom of God. So we have taken the finances and now we have facilities. Some of our teachers, we have 27 staff teachers, staff people. Some of those people were, once they got to the facilities, they would sleep on the classroom floors, which are concrete. And they would stay there the entire week because there was nowhere for them to stay. So what has happened since the book is brought in these extra finances as we have, we're finishing up some facilities for our staff so they can come there, stay there permanently. It's nothing to write home about. So they're small, but at least they're sure. nice. It's, they, they're apartments that belong to them. They can sleep on beds instead of the floor. They're very grateful. We also are raising food on two acres now. We've been raising wow. maize. And uh, even as we speak, hopefully we're having chickens delivered to the agricultural area. We're going to not only raise the chickens for food and to resell in the village, but teaching the children that are older this whole process of being responsible in something and for something over a period of time. So we're hoping that a lot of our kids now, when you, when you talk to them, they'll say, I want, you know, I want to have a farm or I want to, uh, I want to be a physician. I want to be an attorney. Whereas before it was just like, I, I hope I get enough money over my lifetime to get a cell phone and be able to call people. Mm-hmm. So that's, what's been exciting to us. Another quick thing I would share is one of our, we call them book village. Our largest one is in Uganda. The second one we're excited about is in Northeastern Thailand among the Isan people. In that area of Thailand, there are 20 to 200 to 20 to 22 million, forgive me, on people who are Buddhists, really. And it's one of the unreached people groups of the world right now. So we have a couple that's been there for two years. We spent five years kind of getting ready for it. And then they've been there for two years. And uh, the children, again, are that's how we decided to infiltrate with this good news of Jesus Christ village in the community. So modern missiologists will say it takes approximately six years for a, a full-fledged Buddhist from the time you start explaining to them the concept of a savior, Jesus Christ, to where they're really not just working it into their other religion. And, and the area we're in is very, very dark. There are still, there's a lot of what, witchcraft, basically. It is a very distorted Buddhistic culture. Mm-hmm. So by moving in, living among them, we now have a facility there, a house, and we have some farmland close by. We have just had our full-time missionaries on the ground building friendships with the children. So the cool thing about it is now the people within the village, even though they're, we're not hiding anything, we're, we're just saying we want to 
we want to tell you about Christ. But because we've invested in their children and grandchildren, now every day when school is out, they come to the to the center. I mean, our missionaries have almost it, it. It truly is seven days a week. The kids show up at the facility, and they're just they have games. Yes, they they get to eat. Yes, but they're learning about Jesus. So there's this thing. I don't know if you're aware of it. It's called a it's like a Rubik's cube unfolds and it presents the gospel. Hmm. I think I've seen so I think I've seen that. I've only seen it one time. I really wasn't that aware of it. But they were sharing the story about how our kids there, they were sharing the story of Jesus using this gospel cube. Mm-hmm. And one of our 10-year-old girls there started crying, spoke up for the entire group and said, please, please stop. Please stop. You're making us all cry. Because of what Jesus did. Man, I mean, stuff like that, Aaron, that's the stuff that fires me up. I'm like, okay, I am all in until the day I quit breathing. Yeah. So, so we have been, uh, we're getting ready to build a second floor on the facility that we have in El Salvador. It's just, it's just, we're so grateful to God for what he's done and for the people who have been reading the devotional book, find their way to the back of the book and go, oh, hey, these guys are also doing missions. So it's, it's just been great. Well, what a vision that you have and, and what a way that, as God said, trust me in this and, you know, see if I won't, you know, throw open for a blessing. And it sounds like that's exactly what's happening with the book is he has blessed the book and uh, and opened, you know, the, the storehouse for what you're doing. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it really is incredible. It has to be, um, I, I don't know the word, equity is the word that comes to it, like an emotional equity that comes from the stories like the one you just told. There just has to be, and that's not why you're doing it, but that has to be so fulfilling, I think maybe is the word that just to know that, you know, there's so many things we can do in life. <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, we can do a lot of things with our money and our time, but when we do them and invest them in a place that we get to, you know, share what Christ did for us. And, you know, I, I just think that's incredible that you're able to do that. And what what a blessing. Well, incredible. And, and uh, it really is a team effort. I have some great guys that are around me working. We are trying to remodel here in Arkansas. We're trying to remodel and prepare to have a campus where we would, it would, it would be, it is our fourth village, so to speak, our hope village. So it's going to be here in the United States, in Arkansas, but we are trying our best to move as swiftly as we can so that we can bring some of the people from the other locations, let it be a training base and an equipping base. I hope if the Lord is, wonderfully gracious enough i hope to to at least get these four up out of the ground and working and turning them over to younger guys who are much smarter than me. <laughs> oh i doubt that i doubt that i i love your energy and just it, it, you just have an enthusiasm and uh, again we're on a, we're on a zoom we're remote but you know it's just a vibe <laughs> you know what i mean i just think you have an energy to you and i don't mean that to sound mystic i mean you know what i mean i just think you have a passion and a and an energy for everything you're doing. I love that. I, I just love that. So many people, I think, get so stuck in things that they just don't like to do, but it's paying the bills or, yeah. you know, and I, I just love that you're so passionate about this. Yeah. It's really cool. It's humbling. I kind of don't know how to respond to stuff like that. Thanks. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think Absolutely. I, you know, as you said earlier in the podcast, your podcast is this, when we start wrapping up a year, everyone probably, but we start rethinking things, whether we're, 16 years old or 116 years old. I'm still obviously breathing air. And if we're a follower of Jesus, we're trying to figure out maybe, right, how can I just be a little bit more fruitful next year? And we, you and I live in such a self, I mean, we're just a self-centered culture. It's our context. And every time I think, man, I'm such a selfless guy, and then I'll do something, I'll realize you are so full of yourself, Craig. Right, right. Right. And, but, but I was giving this thought in my quiet time about when Jesus was saying, if we try to hang on to our life, we'll lose our life. And right. I mean, I would love to know what he was really, what it sounded like and looked like when he was, Yeah, we're not going to know that obviously for a while until we're gone. But I just, I think he was like, he was Mr. Passion and Mr. Sincerity. Good grief. Mm-hmm. But to hear him go talking to people and just saying, man, you know, all of the stuff that we accumulate or we're intoxicated by 
our personalities and our self-survival mechanisms are amassing more stuff like mm -hmm. I need more pens or more technical you know we just kind of get blinded by it and I don't realize it because I, it's within my context and your context of life so much to hear him say if you try to hang on to that Craig I was I'm looking at me I'm not I'm not trying to look at anybody's stick. I've got a yeah. forest of logs in my <laughs> own. Mm -hmm. But if I, I think you and I will find more life and joy and passion if we can figure out how to get rid of just the stuff we've accumulated so much. Right. So I'm just trying to do that. And man, every time I think I get a few feet, it is so fulfilling. Or if you see somebody. Mm -hmm. That you're trying to minister to really make it across the line and it's i don't know part of its age to aaron i'm gonna be honest so i think you get older and you start going <laughs> and the stuff doesn't mean that much anymore right right it has to be too i have to think when you make the trips see what you see with your eyes and see how another world lives where they don't have the things that we have and that's why i think mission trips are so powerful is it's a reminder it's a real wake-up call to the fact that we are as a society we we are rich beyond blessing and that goes for most of our society regardless of how much you make every year we are you know i don't even know that you might even know the statistics of our our you know percent of uh wealth in this country but we we are rich far beyond we even know and we don't realize that until we see just how other people are living and yet they have joy you know what I mean? Which I think brings it back to center is that a lot of it's just noise. A lot of the stuff mm -hmm. that we accumulate is really just noise and it's distraction from the most important things. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's again, difficult. God knows we live in this. <clears throat> He's the one that carved out the geographical er areas. I, I just believe that, but it's pretty biblical that he's the one that he's a God of providence and he's sovereign and he kind of, he carves out the area. So, I mean, here, here we are. So he knows yeah. we have to deal with this massive materialism thing. And, <laughs> you know, and I can look at the guy that's, you know, pulling down a few million a year and go, wow, I'm just really living the holy life, Craig. And until, like right. you say, then I get someplace else and I, I go, oh my goodness. It's, so I'm getting upset here because my air conditioner is not working like it should in the car. You know, right. But, right. Whatever it is. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, where can people get the book? They can get it, you know, anywhere. Uh, and I'd love for them to get it. Obviously, I, be I believe right. in what we're doing. I think probably the most common thing, Aaron, is people uh, who always hear just go to Amazon.com, mm -hmm. look Awake in the Dawn, Amazon.com, get it there. But you can get it in almost any, I think, anywhere books are sold right now. And do you have you have websites? I do. I'd love, uh, love for you to go to AwakeInTheDawn.com. And that will take you to, if, if you play around long enough, you'll find our mission side pretty easily. And then, and then we have some good friends on our behalf who have started something called Patreon. So you can go to patreon.com, Awaken the Dawn. And mm -hmm. I know nothing about that really, but we're, mm -hmm. it's just another avenue where we can dispense more devotional tools, more ministry tools for the body of Christ. And yet at the same time, tell our story about missions we've been discussing. And it's awake in the dawn. Yes. Like four words. <laughs> four words, not awaken. Yes. It's awake in the dawn. Yes. Just to, just for clarity, for audio purposes, Thank if you. anyone's listening, it is four words and awake and in are two of those four words. Thank you very my much. Right on that. So, yeah, this has been such a blessing. I, you know, I've been with you twice. And like I said, you just, you ooze enthusiasm and it's contagious. And I'm thankful for our time and thankful for what you're doing. And, and I, I always, you know, there, there was that song. I know you were in Christian music, the, the old Ray Bolts, right? <laughs> Thank you for giving to the Lord. You know, I think we all had, that's why that song was so popular back in the day is it was a picture of, I think what we all want heaven to be like, mm -hmm. you know, we hope for is maybe to see obviously our friends and our families and maybe our pets you know i don't know nobody else but you know when, when that all kind of clears out there's that those others those other faces and some of them you've probably seen and and, and made those trips and seen but there's going to be others that we didn't even know you know hopefully and i think you're going to have a lot of faces of people that you probably didn't even know you were impacting uh, so thank you uh, well 
and you. Thank you so much. And I, I do. I look for the. I completely agree with that. I, I'm excited. I'm not excited about. I don't know how this works out in heaven, but I'm not excited right. about right. all the things I miss. But I'm real excited right. to find out what God took that I thought was nothing and basic. Yeah. Well, what a way to end it right there. That's amazing. You're an amazing individual, and I hopefully we'll do a third episode sometime. I'd love to do it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Continued prayers for you, and just keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. God bless. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Unscripted Podcast with your host, Aaron Conrad. Be sure to like, share, and follow on all your favorite podcast platforms. Also, make sure to check out our song, When I Think About You, on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you enjoy your favorite songs. We'll We'll see see you next time time on Unscripted with Aaron Conrad. Conrad.